Let's say that you have an empty vessel that you would like to use to store a chemical that would form a flammable mixture. In order to keep it safe, you would need to ensure that one of the three elements needed for combustion can't happen. Obviously, you can't remove the fuel because that would defeat the purpose of your operation. You could take measures to eliminate ignition sources, but as we've seen, ignition energies are always quite low and you can never eliminate that threat completely. This leaves us with removing the oxidizer, which is commonly oxygen, always present in the air. One way to inert a container before putting it in service is a vacuum purge. The main idea of this process is to first draw a vacuum on the vessel. In this part of the process, we assume that the container is rigid and the volume is constant. We always assume that we work slowly enough that temperature stays constant by always equilibrating. The number of moles in the container decreases because the pressure inside the vessel decreases. In step two, we replenish the gas with fresh, pure inert. Here we again assume that volume and temperature are constant, and the number of moles inside the vessel increases as pressure increases. By observing the figures, we can see that in step one, the oxygen concentration stays the same. In step two, the number of moles of oxygen stays the same such that the oxygen, con oxygen concentration after step two is lower than it was in step one. The overall goal of this process is to, re is to reduce the oxygen concentration to a level below the in-service oxygen concentration. Our job as engineers is to determine how many cycles we need and the total amount of pure inert that we need. At this point, you may be saying, well, let's just do it in one stage. Why don't we just draw a vacuum such that we evacuate all the gas inside and then just refill it with pre fresh, pure inert. That would be great in a perfect world, but in reality, the vessel that we have has a minimum pressure that it, it can withstand. It may be that if you pull a complete vacuum, it doesn't have the structural integrity to hold up to the pressure difference of atmospheric pressure outside and a vacuum inside we may also be limited by the size and efficiency of the pumps that we have. So therefore, we have to do a calculation to determine how much or how many cycles that we need. And the overall goal, as I said, is to reduce the concentration of oxygen. So reduce Y naught, which in air is 21%, to, uh, we'll call it YJ is the notation used in the book and Yj must be less than the in-service oxygen concentration. So at the start in step one, at start we can calculate how many moles of gas we have and what the composition is. We know that at the start Y0 is 0.21 because it's air. We also know that we have a certain pressure. So P high is what they call it, is the uh, high pressure. If we can measure the volume of the tank of the vessel, so we know V and we know T because we can measure the temperature outside, we could say that the number of moles of gas inside in the high pressure conditions is equal to pressure high volume divided by RT. We can then say that the number of moles of oxygen, NO2, for the high conditions is equal to Y naught times NH. So at step one, we are drawing a vacuum and we can now calculate what, how many moles we have and what the oxygen concentration is at these low conditions. At low pressure conditions, uh, I said before that the oxygen concentration was constant. So we say that Y is equal to Y naught still. Uh, I think the book calls this Y1 low, by the way. So the low concentration is equal to what it was before. However, the number of overall moles, N low, is now equal to P low V over RT. So the only difference is we need to know what this pressure is. We have to have some idea of what the pressure that we can obtain with our pump and with our vessel is. We can now say that the number of moles of O2 in the low conditions in the first stage is equal to uh, Y naught times N sub L. Now in the second step, we're replenishing the stuff that we lost with fresh, pure inert. 
So pressure is now back to, to its normal level. So at high pressure, this is uh, step two. We can say that uh, we don't know what the um, oxygen concentration is, but we can say that Y1, so this is uh, the oxygen concentration after one cycle, is equal to the number of moles of O2, moles O2 divided by the total number of moles, total moles. Because pressure is back to uh, its regular level, P is equal to pH now, we now know that the number of total moles is equal to N sub H. And we've already calculated that in step one above. Now we just need to know what the number of moles of O2 are. So uh, we now know that the um, oxygen concentration is different. Um, or, I'm sorry, the total number of moles of oxygen is constant. So the number of moles in, of, of oxygen at high pressure is equal to the number of moles that we had at uh, low pressure. So we can just take this number that we already calculated, this is the number of moles at this stage, and we also say that that must be equal to the number of moles of O2 in this stage. So we can plug in Y0 times the number of moles at the low conditions. And therefore, we can say that Y1, which is the oxygen concentration after this step, is equal to Y naught times the number of moles in the low step over the number of moles in the high step. And we may find that Y1 is not quite low enough. And in that case, we would have to do another cycle of vacuum purging. So we'd just start the entire process over, taking this now to be our initial concentration. And if we did that, we might find that the oxygen concentration after the second cycle would be equal to Y1 times number of moles at the low over number of moles at the high. And in doing this calculation, I've assumed that the high pressure and the low pressure are constant. Uh, so substituting back in for what Y1 is, plugging that number back in, I could then say it is equal to Y0 times NL over NH squared. So if that's after two steps, and kind of see what the pattern might be by, by starting to emerge, we could then calculate that Yj, which is the oxygen concentration after J cycles, is equal to the initial oxygen concentration times the moles at low conditions over the moles at high conditions to the Jth power. And this equation will allow us to calculate what J is, how many cycles we need to lower the oxygen concentration to some level given what our initial oxygen concentration is and given what our pressure is. I should also mention that when you're operating your process, you don't necessarily have a dial on the outside that tells you how many moles you have inside. So because volume and temperature are constant, you can also say that this is equal to Y naught times PL over pH to the Jth power. So either one of these two will work. The second form is a little bit more practical because you have a pressure reading typically on your uh, vessels. Now another question that you might be interested in as the engineer is how much nitrogen do you need for this process? How much inert total do you have to add? So the only part where you need inert is in the second to third step. So you have to add a certain amount of N2 here. You might ask yourself how much N2 do I need to add? How much? N2 is needed. Well, for one cycle, we can say that we had to add enough moles of gas such that we get back to our high pressure. So we can use the ideal gas law and say that P high minus P low times V divided by RT is the number of moles of nitrogen that we need to add for a single cycle. To get the total number of moles of nitrogen that we need, we simply have to multiply it by J cycles. This is equal to the total number of moles nitrogen needed. So these are two key questions that we may have to ask ourselves when doing a vacuum purge. This is the end of the video. Thank you for watching.